Y'all ready? ready? Y'all ready? Y'all ready? Y'all ready? ready? Welcome to the Upside Down Smiley Show where we talk about real life but we don't take life too seriously and we hear the stories of everyday people. My name is Shereen and we have the Wilburns here. Yeah! And when today we're going to be talking about blended families. Cue the intro. a blended family and you came from blended families uh -huh. I'd love to hear like the experience from like growing up and then you guys creating your blended family I think I've always been blended right my um, mom is also part of the blended family okay I didn't realize that so my mom's father had passed away and my grandmother remarried okay he had already had children my grandma had children boom blended family yeah number one maybe possibly I don't actually know if before that there's blended families okay in our family yeah yeah my mom and my father had me they were not married but then my mom ended up having my brother okay with the man she did marry okay or had yeah mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> my mom actually remarried again okay and then we got additional siblings so blended family into blended family into blended family into yeah. blended family so many mix so much mix experience yeah. with it yeah what about you so my mom and my dad were married they divorced i was maybe I don't know, three? Who knows? Uh -huh. I can't remember. Yeah. And then about, so I was maybe nine. Okay. She was messing around with my stepdad and they got married and we moved. You just made her sound like <laughs> she was messing around with that man. She was messing around with him and then she's like, you and can meet my son now. Right. So, hi, hello, nice to meet you. Yeah. Then we went from there, we moved in with him and that didn't work out. I wanted to run away from home because oh, wow. of how I felt he was treating me. Mm -hmm. He had a lot of older kids at the time. Okay. They were I think the youngest was maybe 18 and I was nine. So that's a yeah. big age gap. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So then it was like, all right, I'm done. So that was about 14 when I was like, I, I gotta go. And then she was like, if you wanna go, I gotta go, we're out. Okay. But I still talk to my sisters. Uh-huh. They, they tell me not to call them stepsisters. Yeah. So yeah, it's, that's it. And then now we have our family. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so you had a child mm -hmm. and then did you have any children? None. Okay. You didn't want to date anybody with kids. Nope. Yeah, and I feel like I hear that. I'm the exception. I hear that. The only exception. I had a bit. I had a list. You yeah. can't have short hair. You can't have kids. I was bald headed. I had no hair. She walked in of like, hmm. Yeah. Let's take this list to the side. <laughs> Isn't that so funny, right? Because I feel like I talk to people that are single and they have these like checklists, right? And even one of my cousins recently just told me like, if I ever talk to you about someone that has a kid, like just tell, talk me out of it. And I'm like, I'm not doing that. Because I think when you have all these restrictions on your partner, then you just are limiting mm -hmm. what you can have. Yeah, 100%. What was your reaction when you, when you knew she had a child? It was like, let's go with it. Let's figure it out. Yeah. Let's see. I like her, so let's meet this kid. And let's, <laughs> let's get it over with, you know. But no, yeah. it was good. It was, yeah, yeah. I had to get out of that because I had people in my community, in my mm -hmm. world, saying, you can't just, just because she has short hair, her hair can grow. Or just yeah. because she has a kid doesn't mean she's a bad person. Right. Give her a chance. Talk to her. Figure it out. And then, yeah. next thing you know, I'm walking down the aisle, life flashing from my eyes. <laughs> there it is. Yeah, exactly. And then what was the reaction, your families or the people in your life, when you decided to make like a blended family? I think that everybody was cool. Yeah. Everybody loves me, so it was good. Yeah, yeah. She's all right, so they were like cool. Right. Blended families are not as common in Indie couples unless like someone passes away. Mm. And so I'm hearing more about other families and just like a lot of pushback. And I think it's just something new. Mm -hmm. It's new for people and um, that's why it's just a little bit more of a challenge to kind of mm -hmm. understand. Yeah, I think for like cultures that aren't used to it, there is a lot of pushback. I think that, well, my family grew up very, I'm first generation Filipino American. Mm -hmm. So my family grew up very wanting to be American. Mm. And I think blended families are extremely an American thing. Yeah. But I can't say that my grandmother would have been open to remarrying if she was in the Philippines. Yeah. Her mm. mom did it, definitely did it. Mm -hmm. So I don't know that like, that culture of being in America and it people get divorced in America and get remarried. Yeah. <laughs> like that. It's, it's, right? it's a fine line with it being 
okay but not okay you know it's yeah. like you got a divorce and then this thing you know two weeks later everybody's over it it's like oh you found happiness cool mm -hmm. let's go yeah and i mean you another like on the flip side is with women getting pregnant you know maybe getting an abortion or whatever the situation is or putting their child up for adoption because they're thinking like this is going to be such a it could you know obviously they're thinking about their life themselves mm -hmm. but then also their future partner and yeah. what their life is going to be looking like. So it's a definitely a heavy and complex decision mm -hmm. and whatnot. But what was your guys' experience with blending your families? I think literally I was like, you going to ride from me or no? Yeah. <laughs> I got this kid. We going to ride together <laughs> yeah. or? Like that's literally yeah. the conversation we had. We spent a lot of time getting to know each other um, drunk in the car till like 5 a.m. Drunk in love, be all night. Yeah. And we learned a lot mm -hmm. about each other very quickly. Mm -hmm. And I think that, well, for me at least, I, I was engaged to my daughter's father. Okay. And so for me, it was like, I'm really not trying to date nobody right. anymore. Yeah. So mm -hmm. you, you gonna be my road dog or mm -hmm. we gonna Bonnie and Clyde this? Not really though. <laughs> but, but that was like literally how I talk, would talk to him. And funny, but not funny. I was like, if you don't propose to me by the end of this year, I'm gonna have to break up with she you. Got lucky. Mind you, we were living together. She and I was like, we gonna have lucky. to leave because you need to marry me. Yeah, don't you were like, I'm not, I'm not interested in like doing something casual. Like mm -hmm. this needs to be serious. Which was fine, but don't put a restriction he on did propose though by the end of the we day. were in hawaii how could i pass that up <laughs> right like it was the opportunity yeah to do it's it. like we're not gonna come back anytime soon yeah she did say this but that doesn't matter just get it done with right no it made sense it was, the timing was right yeah how is your relation your daughter's relationship with him she calls him dad oh yeah, oh, yeah, I yeah. Love that. she actually we never made her call him dad at all mm -hmm. she, she called him t Mm -hmm. For like the first two years. Okay. Yeah, like the first two years. Yeah. yeah. Until she was like three. three. Uh huh. Three. And so we were out with my family at a bowling alley, and the kids are all playing, and she's like, "Daddy, daddy, look at me, look at oh. me, daddy." And my cousin's husband is like, "You, you say something, say something to her." Oh, you talking me? to me? What's up? What you mean? Hey. Like, Dad and like you didn't even hear it. Because you didn't even process it. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just hearing T, T, T. Yeah. I'm not used to hearing daddy, so I was just in the moment, like looking around the bowling alley. Hey, it's nice. Right. Yeah. So oh my gosh, what a moment. Yeah. Ever since that, she called him dad. Her father has a problem with it. She's not allowed to refer to him as dad in her dad's house. Yeah. I think that's the issue that a lot of people have. It's mm -hmm. the outside family of yeah. the other parent that you have to deal with. And if there hasn't been healing from that relationship with your spouse and that other partner or pre ex-partner, whatever, it, it could be. Which we did deal with too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We did deal with that into our marriage. Like there mm -hmm. was just a lot of things that I hadn't broken free from, self-taught narratives from that relationship that mm -hmm. I, I didn't get rid of until a year or two into our marriage. So our marriage was hard for a little bit because of that. Parenting styles in one household different from the next. And yeah. then mm -hmm. one person saying, you can't say this because that is mine. Like, well, mm -hmm. I'm here every day. So there's a lot of there's tug and pull. Always. Yeah. And she lives with you all. Yeah, most of the time. Okay, I can imagine it's a sensitive topic. There's a lot of people involved, and so you have to be sensitive to everyone's yeah. feelings and emotions, and I, I can imagine that being very challenging. You gotta break down the walls and have the conversation, though, yeah. for sure, you know? Like, hey, this is when we like to spend time, this is how we wanna spend time, this is what we do here. Don't say that, if you don't do that at your house, that's fine, but don't say what we do is wrong, mm. you know? So you have to put those boundaries out there. Right, so and it's you like- you have to talk to your kids about it, too. I was gonna say, it's conversation with your child mm -hmm. and then conversation with the other parent mm -hmm. right that's not in the space the regular space right yeah and so it's like yeah it's managing all these different spaces and but the conversation is super important right mm -hmm. and has that has it been okay how old is your daughter again she's seven okay yeah so she's still young yeah she's still pretty young yeah um but it hasn't been as difficult as i think it can be for some parents mm -hmm. only because she, her father has two other baby mamas okay so i'm baby mama number two Got out it. of three and so we kind of all collectively co-parent together mm. so each child has like three moms mm. and then like two dads because t talks to the both of the boys too we're just like one big family yeah <laughs> and a lot of co-parenting going on we
And so there's a lot of conversation like, hey, especially for us, to our daughter, it's like, you're not the only one going through this. Your brothers are actually going mm. through this too. So we can talk to them or you can talk to them and then you can come back if you have questions or if you want to talk to the other mom, yeah. you can talk to the other mom if you don't want to talk to us about it. If she doesn't want to talk to me about it yeah. because she's afraid of what my reaction might be, which happens, you can talk to your dad, you can yeah. talk to the other mom like what do you want to do you tell me so that we can work through it um so we're not like going through it alone and figuring it out alone we have the other mom it's like this community yeah, yeah. It, it, it takes a village <laughs> exactly and i think a lot of times we think like oh i'm gonna do everything on my own you know we're a partnership but yeah, well, I, I see so much benefit in having more people involved mm -hmm. in like raising children. Mm -hmm. I, like I see my sister with like having my parents involved and my brother-in-law's parents. And I think that's a beautiful thing because you can, you can learn so much from different people. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. And so like my dad always says like, there's no guidebook. We just did it. We just hope we were doing it right. Yeah. Right. And so when you have more people involved, there's a way that they can advise you. They can kind of be part of the, the process. Were there any other challenges? For our daughter, it was a challenge when we had our, when we had our first together. Yeah. yeah. And then we had a third. And so I think that she's just kind of like, all right, this is what my family looks like. Mm -hmm. My friend's family may not look like what my family looks like. And that's okay. So mm -hmm. she's just trying to navigate that and process all of that. Mm -hmm. So it's a challenge, but it's not like I think daunting also us. the challenge for her is being an only, was being an only child in one house. Mm -hmm. Then going from having brothers, but I can just turn them off after these couple of days because they're gone. I can call them, mm -hmm. but they don't have to be in my space. Yeah. Now I have two little people <coughs> in my space. Mm -hmm. Eh, you know. Right, I mean, it's just like any child's journey, like when their parents are having more kids, mm -hmm. but this is just like a little bit more of a complex situation. But I mean, you know, kids are resilient. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And, and they're going to continue Definitely. to have like adverse situations. And so this is just a part of your daughter's journey. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, I think having a, a strong family unit is important. And that's what you guys are giving them. Mm -hmm. It's just like a little bit different. I mean, recently we went to a pool party mm -hmm. and the other little girl asked her like, are you the oldest? She said, yes, but no, because I have my brothers at home, but then at my poppy's house, I have this. And she mm -hmm. kind of explained the whole story and she did it very well. I just let her do it. Yeah. And the girl was like, okay, you know? Yeah, yeah. it's become the new norm. Right? And that's just the reality of how life works, right? Do you have any advice for other couples or if someone is considering being in a relationship with someone with a child, do you have any advice for people? Communication, 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 yeah. boundaries, and eventually you have to have that conversation with the other person like, hey, this is what we do, this is how it is. Yeah. We're going to agree to disagree at times, but this is what it is because mm -hmm. you, you have your own values and they will too so you just have to stand on those mm -hmm. i really think that if if you have like any question at all then it's not it mm. like if you because we did it for once that's a lie i did but that's just my personality type yeah i mean i'm like the person that maybe doesn't have kids if you have any doubt like don't do it because mm -hmm. it's not just one person you're messing with it's yeah. not like we're gonna break up and then be cool yeah you're like no if you, you're developing a relationship with a child, okay, an example, um, her father was engaged to a woman. They broke up two years later. She's in school and I get a call from a teacher that she's crying because of this person. And I was pissed. I was like, wow, my daughter's first heartbreak was because mm -hmm. you decided to get into a relationship that wasn't gonna last. Jumping into a relationship with someone that has three different baby mamas and like yeah. three different kids, like that's a, that is a lot. That's no one's asking you to do that. Yeah, it's your choice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Choose what's gonna be right for you before creating a relationship with the children. Because that was our daughter's very first deal with heartbreak and yeah. it was very to this day she'll ask mm. she'll ask about that person and i wish you would have had that person's number i did but they changed it like we're never gonna take love away from our kids yeah even if we have an issue with a family member or another person on the other side or whatever if all you want to do is love our children we're gonna let you do that we're mm -hmm. not gonna take that away from you i don't gotta be cool with you yeah. i don't have to like you yeah you could have done some real messed up stuff to me or vice versa but if all you want is to have a relationship with my kid and love my kid i'm never gonna take love away because everybody needs love yeah I, like, as i've been doing these like conversations for the past year i think the biggest thing with all of these topics is the like, communication and it's like we all know that mm -hmm. but it's like it's easier said than done oh, yeah? yeah like you have to have like those uncomfortable conversations you have to like bring it up like just bringing up things is so hard right and then boundaries i love that like i've been doing i did a conversation with someone about child sexual abuse like 
I wasn't taught boundaries. My parents don't really have boundaries, right? Like family came and go, like, and then I liked how you talked about giving your kids agency to like speak up and say what they need and whatnot because I didn't have that, you know? Yeah, I think though, I honestly think that how we give our seven-year-old the space to say how she feels or what's going on and then we try to talk to her more about that there's so many parents who don't do that mm. like even within our friends we see that there's a lot of like parents that want to be like tell me how you feel let's talk about it but then they don't realize that they're molding the conversation and how they respond and like even their body language or yeah. what they say and we really try to be like tell us everything first talk to us and then we're always like do you have any question is what we're saying making sense mm -hmm. if it's not then let's revisit it sometimes she'll be like this is too much for me I, I i don't know what you guys are saying and then sometimes she'll be like i was thinking about and like randomly yeah throw it on us right so, but even that i think she doesn't have that freedom at her dad's mm -hmm. and so even that is like she has to learn it every time she comes back home like okay in this space i can ask these hard questions in this space I have two parents that want me to ask these things because mm -hmm. they want to teach me instead of me learning it from someone else or somewhere else. Yeah. And I, I can ask these things and say <clears throat> these things and I, they won't get mad at me. Yeah. Right? Because I think that was a lot of what I grew up just being fearful of asking things and it being like, no, you don't ask those things. Or, yeah. Why are you thinking about those things? Or why are you doing those things? I mean, this this turned into like a parenting conversation, I think, also. But I think it's, it's a huge part of like, you know, your guys' story. It's, it's a huge part of a lot of people's yeah. story of just like parenting just seems like, you know, something that you're figuring out as you go. Oh, yeah. And this next layer adds a little bit of complication. But what matters is you have a good relationship. And so you guys are creating a foundation for your family and you guys are just making it work. Yeah, and then I would say like advice also is because we had other children, there was never really like the concern like, are you gonna treat her differently mm -hmm. than you're gonna treat our kid? Obviously for me, because I was a, a product of a blended family, and I think maybe for you too, there was always that like looming, like maybe this could happen. But then communication, we talked it out mm -hmm. and it was very much so like, nah, they all, we're gonna treat them all the same. Like right. they're going to know everything that we can possibly teach them right and they're going to be reprimanded the same they're going to be talked to the same they're going mm -hmm. i mean you learn your children like our two our youngest two are, are young they're two and seven months but you learn your children and you can kind of see like okay my seven-year-old i can talk her down from a ledge mm -hmm. my two-year-old i can't really talk him down from a ledge right now yeah but what i can do is distract him with this but ultimately i'm treating them the same and that i'm giving them time and space Space, and then letting them tell me how they feel versus me being like, I know you're angry. Maybe they're not angry. Maybe they're tired. Maybe they're hungry. I don't think that we should be putting emotions on them. They should be telling us what their emotions are. But we do that to all of them. It's not like we treat her differently from the mm -hmm. two-year-old. For me, I know as a kid, I wanted to be heard. So I try to take the time to listen and then give what I can. And then if we have to revisit it, we can revisit it. But for me, it was I just want to be heard because I think that helps mold you as you become older. If you find your voice quicker, you know? I think that helps with confidence. Mm -hmm. It teaches you to how to be confident and to use your voice and that your voice matters. Did you guys feel like you had that kind of space at home? No. Uh, sometimes, Yeah. you know? It all depended on the subject or who was it about, you know? Mm -hmm. So it all depends. I think that I'm very much still parenting differently from how my mom parented mm -hmm. me. Yeah, I think the space wasn't intentionally created, but I think my parents would have been willing to talk. Mm -hmm. I just wasn't always comfortable to do so. Yeah, I appreciate you guys sharing your stories. Anything else? else that you feel like you wanted to include? Black Lives Matter. Yes. yes. Black Lives Matter. He's black. Yeah. So all three of my kids are black. Yep. And I'm a non-black mom. Mm -hmm. So putting expression over, yes, all parts of you matter. But this one part, this big part is really affected right now. And so as a family, here's what we're going to talk about. Here's what we're going to do. Here's how we're going to react. Here's how we're going to stand up. Our daughter's teachers are actually very good at giving space to the classroom to have these conversations. Our daughter already knew what Juneteenth was. Even if we didn't 
outwardly discuss it, but she's de she definitely learned it already. Yeah. So we didn't have to have like in-depth, detailed conversation. It was like, today's Juneteenth. Here's what we're going to do. And here's how we're going to kind of talk about it. And, she, and our daughter being sassy. Her, I already heard about this. I know this. Her I, only concern was, I don't get why it's called Juneteenth. There's no nine in it. I said, yes, it is. And we had to talk through that. But yeah. that was her only, her only yeah. thing. And then now, like, our kids are very transparent. But what I love is our son is walking around talking about that he's a black boy. Mm. Before he was green because it's, it's his favorite color. color. Everything yeah, has yeah. to be green. Yeah. And he finally transitioned out of him being green to, I'm black. I love that. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. Like, black joy makes me so happy. If everyone was doing their purpose, if everyone was just happy, like, the world would just be a better place. Like, we should want that. Mm -hmm. like, that's all we should want. That everyone should just be happy. And it's so hard for us to understand why that's like still an issue. It's the system. And so we gotta just be a part of dismantling all of that. All right, well, thank you guys. I appreciate you. Thank you all for watching. We do this every single week, or I'm trying my best to do this every single you week. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, if you ever are interested in joining me, having a conversation, it's important to have conversations. I think it's important to hear from everyday people. You know, we can learn so much from each other. Mm -hmm. And especially now, just have conversations. Thank you. Thank you. Bye y'all.